days early but can't help it that's Tuesday night this is Pat Windrow at the cable easel there you are so welcome to the program which is devoted to painting and drawing from life on this uh, Eve of Halloween Eve and um, I'm going to be doing something which is kind of reminiscent of Halloween I think you'll agree that it's interesting the uh, cliched Halloween motif is not here tonight I have brought in a mask and it's, uh, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a really unusual piece. It comes from Honshu province in China. It is a bamboo root that has been carved to look like a fright mask. I think that you may or may not find it really intriguing. Uh, it may look a little bit dark to you, which means that we might have to relight it somewhat, but the show is on, therefore we're gonna work with what we have. And maybe I could raise this a little bit or something, or maybe we could find some way of lighting it a little bit more clearly. But I thought that you would be interested in seeing this, the way I would render, uh, for this particular program, the way I would render this extraordinary piece of carving. Um, apparently bamboo grows with all of these, all of these uh, very film, filmy things hanging down into the water and into the land and then they're dug up and there's wood underneath them and that they're carved and um, uh, the uh, person that sold it to me told me where it comes from. It is not old, it is an old tradition. Uh, and there is an insignia on the back, a cutting on the back with a slash mark and a cross, some cross marks that stands for something very bright, which I think is a very strange balance between this fright mask and the insignia that says it's very bright. But um, there's a hole in it because uh, whoever wears this mask uh, speaks through it. And I'm going to work from here. The phones are on. We can talk about whatever you like, about the wonderful lighting behind this mask, which has been done particularly for this occasion. And you may, in fact, um, you see, we don't see pink lighting behind my things very often. So as you can see, we've gone to a small amount of homework for you. Don't forget to call 348-6800 and um, we'll talk, as uh, Miss Rivers says. But in the meantime, let's con concentrate on working from life, which is what we always do, or at least what I always do. And uh, I'm concentrating on this rather extraordinary piece of carving here. So as usual, I'm starting with a blank canvas and I'm going to draw what I see, which of course to me is the challenge of the, uh, of the business of working from life. So working with this, um, what I call thinned out turpentine, I'm going to lay this out and we'll start at the top, which is a fairly, a fairly logical way to be begin. I'm going to enlarge it a little bit as I go for the, the viewership so that it's visible for, um, for, uh, you know, for the long distance of the camera. And um, I want to wish everybody, in case I talk too much and forget to wish you. Uh, I don't really know what a happy Halloween means because I wasn't brought up here and Halloween is still sort of mysterious to me. I just I still don't quite understand Halloween, but I'll go along with it. It's a pretty cute gag and you can, it's an opportunity to, 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 to dress up and fantasize and so forth. I think it's a terrible idea to destroy things, but um, you know, even the best things have a way of uh, getting out of hand sometime. So I hope that this Halloween is not only just a fun one, but hilariously mysterious mysterious and not uh, not destructive in any way. I think that you will notice uh, the, uh, I, I didn't want to, to rely upon uh, any of the uh, um, often seen uh, Halloween motifs, but I do think that this horror mask, this fright mask, is, uh, is a pretty good uh, substitution. And besides that, I bought it to own it. 
Now, as you can see, I'm drawing what I see, and uh, the uh, the um, the whole point of using. Uh, a motif such as this is that all the information that I need is there in front of me. It may appear to be extremely difficult to do this, but when you analyze it, I would be able to make this up. I would in no way be able to um, invent this. This is, uh, first of all, it's not my part of the world. I don't understand bamboo roots. I've never run into one before. And the tradition of doing this is rather astonishing. So, uh, as I say, if you, if you want to call and we can talk about whatever it is, I'm putting these eyes in they're barely visible because the lighting that we've gotten is so dramatic that oh, the eyes have virtually disappeared but I must lay this out as you can see uh, I'd like you to know that um, because of the season uh, I live rather far away and I drove up yesterday through Virginia and uh, I've never seen such colors ever, ever, as there is this year. I think that everybody will agree that this is a really remarkable color time for, uh, for this wonderful season. Uh, and um, I'm going to be doing some tapings and some uh, programs about color in the trees. So uh, I hope that whoever is out there watching uh, will uh, also take an opportunity to try and in the last few days of this kind of um, uh, event which to me is really an event uh, is to go out and paint or draw some of the things that are out there I believe I have a phone call so let me uh, let me answer it hello there tell me who you are please Ronnie. hi how are you I love your painting oh good do you watch me often yeah, I paint every day. Oh, wow. Well, we're old friends then. You must really know me. Yeah. Okay. Tell me your name again. Ronnie. Ronnie. Well, I'm glad to see you. Do you like my mask? Yeah. Isn't it, uh, is it scary? Yeah. <laughs> sure. What are you going to do for Halloween? I'm going to be trick-or-treating. Yes. Get candy from... Uh, or houses that are going to be a gag for Halloween. Good for you. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you called me. Yeah. Okay. My house is a uh, spooky. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. How old are you, Ronnie? Uh, four. Four. Boy, you sure speak well for a four-year-old. I'm glad you called me. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Four. Well, gee whiz. That was neat. I'm glad he's going to go try. I hope that his trick-or-treating is successful and that uh, it all is, is as wonderful as he expects it to be. So, I am laying this out, as you can see, working from life. And... Um, uh, my my uh, thing has been always do not work from formulas. So many programs are out there uh, using uh, using formula techniques whereby everything is done in the same way. Well, it isn't. It couldn't possibly be done in the same way, and it must it must it must be done from life. In my opinion, if you are going to be a realist, if you're going to be a fantasy, then that's an entirely different. Uh, an entirely different prospect. However, uh, so I'm laying this out and I'm going to attempt to paint. This is very difficult, but I'm sort of having a good time and I'm going to talk at the same time and hope that you are as interested in the uh, rendering of this, um, of this very peculiar mask. This is all roots, as I told you before, and it seems to be a uh, Japanese, uh, uh, it's from China. Uh, uh, I bought it from a man from Shanghai and we put a blue light on it, which I think makes it even more dramatic this whole, whole all of this is blue light as you can see my uh, my hand is blue and we've got a red light behind it so um, a small effort was made to get this so that you will be in on the um, on the nice uh, program that we have uh, planned for you tonight the um, the number is three four eight six eight hundred and uh, don't forget that when you uh, when you call, it's the once a month opportunity, and it may be once uh, uh, I will not be back alive again on this program for the entire month of November and December. So the next time I'll be able to talk to you is in January, which of course is a long way off, and a lot can happen between then and now. So if you want to talk and you got anything to say, why don't we just why don't we just talk now? Um, 
I like I was just telling you that uh, that uh, coming up from Virginia yesterday the uh, the scenery was uh, almost indescribable well even for somebody that speaks as, as, as continuously as I do I find the words difficult to come by to describe the extraordinary colors that are on the uh, on the American highways now uh, at this time of year so I think a very large painting is going to come out of my drive up here yesterday because uh, it was really uh, it was really remarkable never seen anything quite like it it must be the fact that this was such a hot summer and the leaves have hung onto the trees for so long so uh, as you can see this is all a question of trying to uh, decipher and figure out how this gets put on um, it is probably an extremely difficult thing to attempt to do but uh, as I say I want to, I wanted to do something that wasn't going to be a cliche uh, of Halloween. Okay, I have another call from my loyal and faithful camera person there who tells me that there is a call. So tell me who you are. Hello? Hello, my name is Cynthia. Cynthia, hello. How you doing? I'm fine. I've been watching your show a lot and I like the things you do of Long Island. Good. Uh, what my problem is, is when I'm doing a painting, I always make the leaves or whatever I'm drawing smaller than what it actually is. Really? Yeah, how do I go about correcting this? The leaves, you mean when you do landscapes? No, like a plant or something, it's always smaller than what the actual plant is. That's good. You must not worry. That the, 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 the problem that most people have is making it bigger. You want to work under size. I do want to work under size. Yes, <laughs> Cynthia, work under size. Okay. It's, well, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, if that comes to you naturally, you're ahead of the game. Oh, good. I didn't know. I always wanted to make it uh, as lifelike as... I could, you know. Well, okay. Then, if that's what you are, if that's what you're hell bent on doing, then I can tell you how to do it. You have to find a point of reference. Uh, the center, or start the center, and find a point of reference and simply make the size compared to that point of reference. Okay. You understand what I mean? Yes. Like, uh, take a particular part of the plant and go for the exact size. Yes. Okay. And then you can't. Then you can't miss. If you use if you use points of reference. In other words, if this part of the leaf comes here and it's at the middle part of the next leaf or the middle part of the background, you will find yourself guided by merely those points of reference. Hmm. Thank you very much. I'm going to continue to watch you, and I do enjoy you. Well, thank you for calling, Cynthia. You sound like a very serious. Um, person who wants to paint well. I'm a person with a sweat throat tonight. Oh yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> but enjoy. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh good. Well, well uh, questions that have something to do with proportion is always interesting to me because it's apparently an enormous problem. Uh, yes, let me take another call. Um, hello there. Tell me who you are, please. Patrick. Yes, Patrick. Um, I'm calling from Lake Rock, Arkema, Yeah. And I just want to tell you that I enjoy watching your program. Well, aren't you kind to say that, Patrick? I do a lot of uh, work with acrylics, mainly in pen and inks, with uh, animals and scenery. And really? Yes. Um, do you work from life, or do you work out of your head, or what? Uh, sometimes I take a video camera and pause, good. pause it, and then I'll do some from photos. Well, good for you. Your photos, you mean? Yes. That's great. You know, I always th I think that people have to take their own photos. That's the way to do it. Uh, to take somebody else's photos, you're just copying somebody else's uh, view of something. Right. Yeah, no, that's wonderful, Patrick. Good for you. Okay, like I just said, you, your work is very good. I enjoy watching. Thank you. Bye -bye. Call me again sometime and keep working. I will. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously laying out these shadows. Um, uh, I'm doing it in, in, a, in a kind of a purple. The wonderful thing is that these sh the, those strange roots that have been cut out are casting these very dramatic and really sort of spooky shadows underneath the eyes. Uh, the mouth is, is rather astonishing and the, one of the reasons that I think uh, we decided to put this um, the red light behind the mouth is because it's so incredibly uh, dramatic looking and uh, why don't I just see if I can get some feeling about what that's going to look like I'll put the d details of the teeth in later so now I'm going to use uh, a fresh brush because I need the, pa the paint to, to the color to be absolutely clean I'm using a wonderful color called um, geranium lake it's the most amazing color it is so brilliant and I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow with it to try and get it as close to the um, as close to the pink that is being shown to you on your screen geranium lake and um, uh, white and a touch of yellow and so if, as long as I have this on my brush and there's a see that's an astonishing color um, and it's all in the behind here as well which means that all of the dark all of the side of this mask here is going to have to be darkened 
because now that I've got the background on, I can see how much darker the uh, right side of the picture is. I'm not going to uh, waste the time now to get it all um, all painted here because what the, the interesting thing that I have to do is the figure. Um, I have a feeling that I have not made this purple enough. The, uh, the coloring of the shadows is extremely purple. So let me see if I can, or bluish. Well, here, here the cheeks have got a, um, here we go. So um, when I'm working on something like this, I become so intrigued with the texture of this kind of thing that uh, I find myself uh, uh, thinking I've got to do this really absolutely true to what I see because it's, um, it's the kind of texture that you find on difficult things like rocks. And when people say, I want to go and paint rocks, I always say, well, you're asking for the most difficult thing in the world and this kind of carving is extremely difficult also. Why don't I work on the eyes as long as I'm, I'm uh, here jabbering away at you and uh, waiting for your really nice calls. There's some few highlights that are hanging around here and they are giving a, a, a really rather airy, eerie look to, uh, to this thing. The, um, the, the shadows that are being cast so densely uh, by this uh, heavy lighting have made the eyes virtually disappear. However, uh, I'm painting what I see, which is what I, uh, which is what I preach to everybody that, that watches my program. And apparently the people are beginning to, uh, to think that it's a pretty good idea because they say, I've been doing what you say and actually um, it is uh, less it's less confusing to work from life uh, than it is to try to remember or to invent it. Let me see if I can get that lid. Every, every face, uh, whether it's a carved uh, fright mask or whether it's a real face, has the same kind of things happening to it. It has a lid that is lit from the bottom and it has lids that are lit from the top and uh, when you have uh, a motif like this, it will teach you far more than you think. Um, uh, so uh, I can only keep stressing to you, uh, paint what you see and paint from life, it is far more informative when you do it that way. Um, I was going to talk to you a little bit about not being here for uh, the uh, holiday uh, uh, program uh, next, uh, next month when I'm supposed to be here. I'm not going to travel on the holiday. I find that it is just, uh, it just, I just, I just uh, don't do that. I don't, I don't travel on, on very dense holidays. So the next, uh, th Thanksgiving is the next time when I shall be um, not here. So uh, I just needed to tell you that if you wanted to talk, we can talk this time. Now here are those, here are those absolutely strange and really exotic looking um, uh, pieces of root that have been, that have been um, uh, carved out of this uh, very strange uh, item. Uh, I found this in a uh, in a flea market down in Virginia, and it was by a man who imports all these uh, things from uh, China. And he told me that these are traditional carvings. Uh, they are not exactly airport souvenirs, but they come sort of close to it. And the um, and these are the kinds of uh, of uh, things that uh, you'll find in homes in China. Uh, the people, of course, who do these do it for on a commercial basis, and they're done by the by the by the hundreds. But they're never the same. They are they. They all are different in one way or another. So uh, the um, the young man who uh, who sold this to me knew uh, sort of the history of this kind of thing. And um, if anybody wanted one, I suppose I could find one. <laughs> I could go back to that flea market and find that young Chinese man that is uh, earning his living selling uh, these artifacts. I, I do believe that they are artifacts also. So here is the, uh, and, and, and as I'm doing this nose and this nostril, it is very reminiscent of when you do a portrait. It just happens to be very exaggerated. So um, uh, remember that whenever you pull to put your a task like this to you to yourself, you will find that you're learning far more than just the uh, the uh, subject at hand. You're finding out that this is the way you would render all kinds of other problems that would have to do with noses and mouths and eyes and so on. I believe there's a nice sharp highlight right up here, which is going to make it stick out, um, give it a three-dimensional look. Uh, 
I like doing these uh, these uh, pieces, which are very unusual because they. Um, uh, I mean, I own this one. If I didn't own it, I would be even more intrigued to doing it, to, because then I can sort of, um, well, have it for my own. This, these teeth are triangular, I see, and I I prepared the background in dark, and now I'm just painting the teeth in, which I think is the, probably the best way to do it. Uh, as you can tell, I am uh, I'm improvising as I go along. I am not. Uh, there's no special way of doing this. So all you do is to um, is to go from one thing to the other and um, hope that you can pull it off as I say so anyway uh, let's talk about uh, let me talk about the uh, I'm, I'm going to try to come up here sometime uh, during the month of, um, of December to do a Christmas program but for the for, but actually the, the way the plans are now I shall not be back until 1992 which reminds me that at that time we've got one heck of a national celebration going to start taking place and I'm going to see if I can't come up with some interesting things uh, to do with the uh, quintessential little, little, whatever, however it's pronounced. The, um, uh, an awful lot of preparations are being made for that particular uh, event, and um, I, I see if I can't come up with some, maybe to have some marine painting, uh, because I have done marine painting, namely boats and so on, uh, and tall ships, and see if I can uh, plan some programs just to observe the uh, uh, with everybody else in America what is happening in uh, 1992 I'm sure that everybody is fully aware of what is going to be happening <clears throat> I um, I also uh, would like you to know that when I have been in I have been in Virginia I opened my own gallery down there and um, if anybody happens to be passing through a uh, a rather beautiful town called Front Royal Virginia I have a gallery called guess what the Windrow Galleries and I'm the only gallery in town so if you're ever driving down a little bit west of Washington 60 odd miles west of Washington and you pass through a town that says Front Royal you'll know I'm there and. And uh, you are invited, as of now, to come and visit me anytime you can, uh, if you are in fact traveling. I would. Uh, some people have walked into the gallery and have said I'm from Setauket, and I promise you, I almost fell over. Uh, they had heard uh, through friends of mine here that I was opening a gallery down there, and in they came. So it was like old home week, and it's always amusing to see see people from one's own territory. I have another call, so let me take that. Hello there. Yes. I like the way you paint. Oh, good. What's your name? Danelle. Danelle. How old are you? Six. Oh, good, Danelle. Where are you calling me from? You live in, you live in the area? I live in Rocky Point. Okay. Road. Oh, well, welcome to the program. I'm glad you called me. You got anything you'd like to say to me? No. Oh, just that you like my paintings, right? Yeah. Well, that's very nice to hear, and thanks for calling. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, good. We have we have small critters that are watching me paint this mask, and they seem to be they seem to be intrigued enough to tell me about it. Good. As you can see, it is a uh, it is time consuming. It also means that you have to do a great deal more observing than than you thought. <clears throat> But, <clears throat> in the end, all of the effort that is put into this kind of thing is very much worthwhile, <clears throat> especially <clears throat> when you have done it uh, and you have selected the piece. Um, I, I always like to emphasize to people that uh, the selection of these pieces is, is half of the problem. Uh, the people who uh, say to me, uh, I don't know what to paint, they have a real problem. Uh, the people who say, I want to paint so-and-so, they have already begun to solve the problem of how to do it, if they have some concept. So it's a question of selection. How do you select what you're going to paint? I was in a, something of a quandary about what to do for this Halloween program until I wandered through this flea market and found this young man selling this, and it was immediate. I immediately thought, well, there's the answer to my Halloween show. Okay, here's another program, another, um, Another call. Let me take that other call. Hello there. Hello. Yes. I would like to say that I love all your paintings. Good. And I wanted to know what kind of things you, you could suggest for me to paint, because I haven't painted for a while. Uh, how old are you? Twelve. Well, what interests you, Miss Twelve-Year-Old? What do you like? I like, um, like bridges ah. and like roads and things like that. Ah. Well, guess what I would tell you to paint? 
What? Bridges. Because you must only paint what interests you. Uh, I would not sit here on my little stool in the uh, television uh, studio and tell you what to paint because I don't know what interests you. So my answer to you about what you should paint is you must paint what you're interested in. Thank you. And so I'm glad you asked me that and I, don't, I hope you don't think that that answer is a non-answer. It, it's meant to be very specific. It's meant to tell you that you are the one that is going to create it, therefore you have to be interested in it. Okay. Okay? okay. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you and thanks for calling. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Now these shadows make it look like this thing is crying. Isn't that fascinating though? Anyway, uh, so there are some more highlights here. There's a high this goes down to a point, which gives it a different look entirely. Anyway, um, uh, as I say, the, uh, the business of, of, of uh, selection is what, is what uh, the business of painting is all about. If you can select what you want to paint, you have therefore been the total creator. My problem with the programs that are, that are on the TV now uh, um, are that they're telling you what to paint and they're expecting you to copy those mountain pictures. Uh, there's a call, so let me take that. Hello there, tell me who you are, please. Hi, I'm Chris. Yes, Chris. Um, first, I just want to say that I like um, the conversations that you have when you paint. <laughs> Good. Um, I would like to know how I could make a mask like that look more like a woman. Oh, well, uh, you probably just, I suppose, to soften the features. Uh, you know, th there is a different quality of features in the male face uh, than in the female face. I suppose the best answer that I would have would be to, to soften them. Um, uh, you could introduce eyelashes, but that's a cliche. You know, that, that's sort of, that sort of cartoon-like. Um, I, that's an interesting question. I, it, it never occurred to me. I'm, I'm so literal that I'm taking this for exactly what the carver had in mind. Um, uh, I guess to soften the features, you know? Okay. Um, to make the, uh, I don't know. It would seem to me that if there's something like a, like a dragon or a monster that the male and the female would have, would not have that much uh, difference to them somehow. Well, I hadn't thought I about it. If Good. It's a monster. It just doesn't matter, right? Uh, well, it, it, oh, it matters. I think <laughs> I think monsters matter. <laughs> It, it, it matters. I would have to think about that. It's a good, if I think of something before the end of the show, uh, tell me your name again. Chris. Oh, Chris. I'll call you, I'll talk to you by the end of the show if I figured out what to make this more look like a woman. All right. It's a good challenge. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Bye. Oh, that's neat. Okay, another call. Hello there. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi, my name's Ed. I, I live out in Ridge. It's about, uh, well, about 15 miles uh, east of uh, Port Jefferson. Yeah, I know where Ridge is. But I do go into Port Jefferson quite a bit, the wife and I. And uh, we always enjoyed the art shows out there. And, and I wanted to, you know, congratulate you and wish you success in your, your store outside of Washington. Well, thanks. Have you ever had a place in, uh, in Port Jefferson? Oh, I have had a gallery in Setauket for 30 years. Oh, in Setauket. Okay, so it's just a stone's throw away. From yes, a stone's throw away. It isn't there anymore. I, I only meet people there by appointment. Oh, I see. But uh, I've had a... You're, you're, uh, you found me too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm uh, out here. I've been, oh, God, I've been in Setauket for 30 years in that gallery. <clears throat> uh -huh. And uh, just two years ago, I moved out and opened, uh, opened what I told you before. Uh -huh. But I sure appreciate your call. I know Ridge. There are parts of Ridge that are very, very handsome. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. Out here and paint one of the lakes out here that we have. Yes, I, I know. That's why I mentioned the fact that Ridge uh -huh. is a pretty place. It yeah. really is. Well, I'm sure glad you called me. Well, thank you for taking my call. Good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <coughs> well, uh, here we are. I'm doing what is called preparing for the uh, preparing for the highlights, and I'm putting all this darkness in, and uh, hoping the program won't go won't come to an end too fast, so that I can show you what I mean by preparing for the highlights. <coughs> 
<laughs> this, this kind of uh, very rough beard is all absolutely interpretive. It, it, would, be, um, it would be foolish to attempt to do all of these um, fraying, strangling, straggling, root-like hairs, uh, literally, from what I see. I'm going to take just the bare uh, essentials, the, the, the salient parts of it, as a matter of fact, and I'm mixing some white and a little bit of yellow ochre to get the highlights and see if I can do it in one sort of masterful stroke, as you might say, so that I can, uh, so that I can be free with it and see whether or not I can, I can um, pull this off. Uh, you can't, you have to, uh, you have to ki kind of get to the, uh, to the uh, anatomy of this thing before you'd be able to and it's very complex, and of course, doing it in a short period of time is a fool's errand. I would attempt to do this far more uh, um, um, faithfully rendered, uh, at, you know, in my own studio with more time, with a great deal of uh, with a great deal of um, uh, observation from what I'm looking at. But for the, but I'm just trying to show you a little bit how I'm how I go about uh, tackling something which is this complex. Uh, I've just gotten a signal that I have to take a break, so I'll take a break. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. the final part of this program which is devoted to Halloween just a little bit in advance but that's the way the calendar was this year last year we were on Halloween night itself the entire crew here was unrecognizable but today they're in their very proper clothes and I'm the only one who's uh, making like Halloween uh, but that's okay because um, at least I have no competition as it were um, the um, the business of painting Fascinating, interesting. Everybody who calls me says they love to see me do these things, and I am. I believe that uh, it's because of my approach to working from life. I I think that people are intrigued to see things come alive and recognizable from something that they can see themselves. Uh, many many programs that devote themselves to showing people how to paint, and they are painting objects which can't be seen. So you could put anything you want, and there's nobody there to question it. So uh, in my opinion. The challenge lies in the uh, the interpretation of the third dimension onto the second dimension, which is what I'm doing. This is the the second dimension is the flat part, and the third dimension is that round part. To make the to make the transition between the two is what is interesting to me. So uh, let me continue to prepare the ground for these uh, for this um, for this beard or whatever arrangement this is. You put the dark on first. Uh, I feel that um, telling you this is uh, not maybe not as interesting uh, as it is as, as I think it is, but it's also going to prepare you how to do it yourself if you were going to do this. Uh, many people might look at this and say, I wouldn't know how to interpret that uh, complicated bunch of uh, wiggly things that stick out and go in every direction. And so I'm telling you that you would prepare it by doing the dark first and then superimposing, I think it would be the term, the light part. Thank you. 
uh, as you can see, this is all being uh, is all being prepared to receive the lighter lines. Um, the fact that this is silhouetted against a brilliant uh, a brilliant background is uh, it means that this side of it is going to be extremely dark, almost in silhouette, and you're going to see the wiggles over there in the dark by. Um, like so. Uh, I think that you'll see that uh, the, um, the, uh, the raggedy parts are being uh, silhouetted against the brilliant pink, uh, pink lighting. I think, the, I think the lighting is rather remarkable. Uh, hello there. Tell me who you are because I have another call. All right. I'm Dee Dee from yeah. Smithtown. Yes, Dee I have a very important question. Oh, good. What do you do with the paints that are left over on your palette? Oh, I cry over them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I weep. I have not, I have yet learned, I have not yet learned, and I expect I never shall, uh, to put uh, just enough paint on. And many times, I tell you, Bibi, what I do, I try to remember to cover them with um, aluminum foil, airtight. Do you ever put them in a jar and cover them? Oh, uh, there's no way of putting these wiggles in a jar. I can't put I can't put this stuff in a jar. Oh, all right. Right. Thank and you. so what I try to do is to cover them as airtight as possible with some uh, aluminum foil and hope that they form a skin, which means that that is a sort of a cap in itself. Yes. The skin that forms becomes becomes a sort of a lid, and then uh, and then I try. You know, I'm very stingy. I don't like to waste paint. <laughs> And so your question is well placed and very important, as you say. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> what? Yes, I weep over my, over my wasted paint. I try. I really try not to waste it. It is very hard to uh, to judge. Most of the time, I'm I'm pretty good at it. Most of the time, I don't waste them too badly. Okay. So now here I come with the uh, trying to get these. Um, hair-like things superimposed on the dark background uh, with one stroke. You sh I sh must not overwork this. If I overwork it, it is going to look contrived, it isn't going to be spontaneous, and so it has to be very interpretive so that, uh, and, and it also has to be recognizable. It has to be so that people are not, not going to ask the dreaded question, what is that supposed to be? Uh, so, and it would take, it will take time in the studio for me to refine this, but you know, in a limited period of time that I have, I try to disseminate, that's a good word, as much information as possible to you because that's the point of this program, not to just entertain, but also to give you some pointers about what I'm doing. Okay, I have another call, so let me take it. Hello there. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you whether or not you uh, use the canvas boards just for the demonstrations or um, I was told in my uh, painting lessons uh, that I have taken that uh, canvas boards don't really hold up as well. I love your painting show. I really do. You're absolutely right. Canvas boards are what I am using for demonstrations because this is never going to, not, these pieces, uh, as nice as they may be, are never going to be considered, quote, fine arts. Uh, I, uh, they, um, they are, these will last for as long as anybody cares to, uh, but um, I never work uh, on, on anything but stretched canvas. Okay. But if I'm doing these demonstrations, absolutely, I work on these, and I think that for beginners, the stretched canvas is fine in order to experiment. All right. But if you're a serious painter and you're going to do things for a, a, lasting, a lasting piece of work, uh, obviously you must work on pre properly prepared stretched canvas, yes. Okay, and do you varnish your paintings after like six months? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, I do, and I usually try to find the varnish that is not shiny. I do not like shiny varnish on paintings. Oh. I think it's a terrible mistake. Oh. And you. so I get flat varnish. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Enjoy your show. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Um, well, um, I have absolutely no, uh, not the foggiest notion of what the time is doing. I'm just hoping that it isn't running out too badly uh, and that I can get a, a little bit more of this done and maybe a little bit more understanding of how to do these, these uh, very, well, ragged uh, endings. Uh, these things are apparently going to be done with a very fine brush, such as I would do grass. But in the meantime, okay, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, apply some of my techniques uh, to, to let 
let you uh, in on the on the uh, use of some of these um, some of these materials, such as what I call my grass brush, which is really a liner. Now here, because this is the side of of the um, of the side which is in denser shadow, all of these are less brilliantly lit than the ones on the other side because the overhead light is not as bright, uh, which is nothing more than just an observation of what's taking place. And the um, the need to continually observe is, of course, always here with me. And I try to I try to tell people how uh, observed uh, things are. The uh, first of all, it it borders more on fine arts than it does on commercial arts, but it also is much more instructive if you are concentrating on um, observation. Uh, I don't think that copying anything from anywhere is a lesson. Uh, in other words, the, the same dimension, copying the same dimension. Uh, if, there was, um, if there was any value to copying, I would have shown you how to copy well. Uh, but the trouble is that uh, some of the shows that are on the air do not even copy well. They um, they eliminate the 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 need to show intense color concentration or the mixing of color, or even the way one arrives at compo at composing pictures. I think that if you're going to paint, you must compose. And just to lay out a range of mountains in the background against a blue sky and then throw some snow all over it and a couple of pine trees is not what I would call an observed painting, nor is it an an, an understanding of what you're seeing. So. Uh, even though I'm trashing all of those other programs, uh, not all of them, many, many of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, I have another call, so let me take it. Hello there. Yes. Hi, yes, this is Lisa. Yes, Lisa. Hi, yes. Um, I was wondering, how long have you been painting? Uh, oh, a long time. A very long time. Oh, and i like to know, like, what kind of training you've been through. I went through no training. I'm totally self-taught. Really? Yes, oh, ma'am. I'm sorry I'm laughing. I'm just, like, so excited. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're laughing. You could be crying. Uh, well, I just enjoy a, a lot of your paintings, and, like, I have fun. I'm trying to paint a lot, too. You what? I enjoy your paintings. And I <laughs> Well, I'm awfully glad that she called, and I'm glad that she said what she said. I uh, didn't get the rest of it, but that's okay. So that was uh, um, the... Um, the uh, what I was saying about um, about the uh, uh, technique of uh, of um, observing uh, is the is the one that is going to do more teaching. Uh, the only way that I have taught myself is by observe uh, by uh, by observation, looking and seeing. People talk about the water drops on my flowers. It's because I put water on a flower and find out what it does and and how it gets that way. So uh, self instruction, of course, to me is because I'm self taught is a uh, very valuable. I don't knock the business of doing training or taking lessons. I think that many times lessons are absolutely essential. But for me, I would, I preferred to go off on my own experimenting and my own uh, solving of problems, which is um, if, you have a, if you have something in mind and how am I going to do this, you set it up and then you simply look at it. It's a self-study program. Uh, they're, uh, they're all over the world. People do it all the time. So I'm not doing anything unusual. I just happen to admit it. Uh, a lot of people uh, like to sort of fib about the fact that they've been trained because they some idea that you're not any good if you haven't been trained formally. I don't agree with that. I think that you can be uh, equally as uh, equally as uh, valid uh, self-taught. So anyway, I have here the problem. Hello, another call. Let's let's take another call. Hello there. Tell me who you are. My name is Jonathan. Jonathan? Yes. Okay, Jonathan. Um, uh, it's amazing how you do your your work. <laughs> is it? Yes. Okay. You mean how all of a sudden something happens and you understand what I'm doing? Yes. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad that you think it's amazing because sometimes I even amaze myself. <laughs> Jonathan, yes. are you a painter? Oh, yeah. I have, an, um, I have a um, easel in my room, too. Oh, lucky boy. And your parents allow you to paint in your room? Mm-hmm. That's great. My congratulations to your parents. Thank you. And so, tell me what else you do. Oh, I paint a lot of stuff, and my mo my mom and dad really enjoy it. Well, I'm so glad you've got you've got a you've got a, a lovely life, Jonathan. And I'm glad that you called, and I'm very glad that you, that, that that you're that you're there working with an easel in your room. Isn't that the best? 
I'm glad you called me. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Uh, Halloween. What? You have to go eat? No, yeah. <laughs> you can have a half the Halloween. <laughs> okay. See, sometimes the uh, electronics don't come through as clearly as possible. <laughs> Thanks for my Halloween wishes and go eat anyway. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I, I tell you, sometimes it's, it's difficult to make out what's being said, but anyway, we had a laugh about it. All right. So. Uh, this may not be what you might call an absolutely exact rendition of what you see, but it certainly um, uh, accomplished the purpose. This is a very complicated thing to do. I really can't believe that I would be so so um, nuts as to pick this out and try to do this in an hour because it's really very, it's much more complicated than flowers and things like that and vegetables. But, uh, you know, if there's no, if there's no, uh, no gamble, there's no gain. And um, so I gambled and uh, I'm going to be uh, so certainly taking the time to refine this because I do own this piece and it probably is going to be available for me to really work on it. And when I finish it, I'll bring it in and show it to you. This shadow is crossing that eyelid there. Fascinating. I hope that you're seeing as much of it as I am. Um, another call? Good. Let's take another call. Hello there. Tell me your name. Yeah, hi, my name is Sean. Yes, Sean. Okay, um, I, myself and my wife, we both uh, love your show and we watch you all the time. Good. Most times we catch you uh, taped. Uh -huh. Not that often we get to call you live. Okay. And uh, I'd like to tell you that we love your show. And um, one time you did a piece from Port Jefferson. Yes. And that was a very good piece. Which, which part of Port Jefferson? I've done a number from Port Jefferson. Was it the one with the rusty tanker? No, it was one with like a cliff. Oh, yes, yes. That was a very good piece. Ah. And uh, we was hoping, you know, we were hoping, I should say, that uh, you would do some more shots like that or paintings. Fine. We're always looking for places to go, and I'm always happy to have people give me some thoughts about what they'd like to see me do. Yes, I was in Port Jefferson today, as a matter of fact. A uh, beautiful day. And, um, yes, of course I'll be, I'll be doing some more. So um, be sure you keep calling me, Sean. Okay, I want to ask you one more thing. Um, Fine. Do you ever put your, your, your paintings up for sale? Oh, yes. Didn't you know about the Art for Open Lands that we had here last uh, last April? No. Oh, we had a program. We had a uh, an open house here with all these paintings that I've done on the show for sale. Right. And uh, we're going to do it again this next year in uh, in April. And the uh, the uh, part of the uh, price of the paintings goes to the Nature Conservancy to buy land on Long Island. Well, that's good to hear because uh, we are both interested in maybe picking up a piece because, uh, like I said, we love your work. Good. And, well. Uh, like I said, one of the best pieces we've seen was that piece you did out in Port Jeff. Ah, well, okay. Uh, Sean, um, uh, you, of course, will be alerted uh, way far in advance about that program. It was, uh, it was really enormously successful, and um, we're going to do it again this coming year. Just one more thing. Yeah, I think ahead. they should put a little bit more, um, no, you know, aware the people of when you're going to be on live as opposed to taped into the cable guy or something like that. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, uh, you see, the, it's, in the, it's in the program. Do you get a program from, from your cable vision company? Yes, I do. Well, it should be in there, and I'm the last Tuesday of every month only. Okay. Uh, the last Tuesday is when, I, when, is when I'm on live. The rest of the time, it's all taped. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Good night. Bye. Uh, yeah, the uh, the address was uh, put on the on the screen while I was talking to Sean. I hope people got that. So I'm doing what I'm doing now is refining all this. I'm making the blends a little bit more obvious, and I'm trying to get some more textures in here. So as you can see, all of this becomes a question of refining uh, what began uh, what began as a rough sketch. The um, I have made the eyes a little bit more visible than what you people see on the screen because I'm closer to it and I can uh, use it more uh, as a better reference material. I think I have another call. Let me take it. Hello there. Hi, this is Nandy. Yes, Nandy. Um, how old were you when you started to paint? Seven. And is oil-based or um, water-based a better paint a better paint to paint with? Well. I like to paint in oils because I'm an adult, but oils are rather difficult for small, for younger people because there is a chance that it can get pretty messy and it's also, uh, it's also uh, uh, kind of dangerous to use oils when you're very young. Well, I go to camp at Usedan in New York and um, I use oil, I use, I mean, acrylic paint and it works really well. Well, good. Of course it works well. Oil paints, you can, I would say that when you get to be about 10 or 12, you can use some oil paints with people watching you and making sure that you don't get paint on your finger and then stick your finger in your mouth, you know? Yeah. Because they are, they are, they have got poisons in them. But um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you go to camp where, you're, where you do painting with oils. That's wonderful. 
Anything else? No, it's a, no nothing else. <laughs> I'm glad you called. Bye. Thank have you. A, have a nice Halloween. Bye. Bye. Okay, well, we've got a we've got a whole bunch of really uh, nifty now. See, I'm I'm doing some refining underneath here, and I need to I need to get a lot of shadow under here for, uh, and I also need to talk to an awful lot more people. I think if they are out there and willing to pick up the phone and call me, because it's what I uh, that's how I find out what people are interested in, is when they call and ask me these pointed questions. There's a lot of very dark areas in this beard which are very which may not which may may not be is easily seen uh, on the screen as it is here in front of me because everything is really so extra dark um, uh, on the monitor. I don't know if you're getting it as dark as I think you are, but uh, I'm getting a lot more detail by being close to it than you are from the from the um, from what's projected on the screen. This is a nice technique to uh, to be able to have you see what I'm painting with. I believe that this is, there are a few shows that concentrate on live, uh, working from life, um, projects, but I, I must say not, not enough of them, and so I think that if you can see what I'm doing on your screen, and then you can shift over to the painting that I'm doing, you can probably understand a little bit more how to observe, and if people are interested in painting, they're going to get a lot more out of this than, than you would out of just copying somebody else's uh, mountain range in some never, never land that uh, never existed anyway. Uh, I find that's really, uh, it's too prevalent, it's everywhere. Those, those paintings are showing up in a uh, flea markets and yard sales all over the place and I and I see them uh, just everywhere and I just don't think that they're teaching people very much and I don't think that they're producing anything particularly lasting in the way of arts so so much for that I uh, I find that I'm sometimes rather intolerant of things like that <laughs> which may be not a good idea but that's the way it is um, I, um, I, I want to tell you once again that if you are anywhere near a place called Washington, D.C., and an awful lot of people travel to Washington, uh, there, is a, there is a route called 66 that goes due west of Washington and passes through a town called Front Royal, Virginia. That's where I have opened my gallery, and uh, this is a standing and open invitation to anybody who comes down that way to drop in and see me. I would be more than delighted to receive anybody who's who, who comes out and visits me in my newfound location uh, but I'm still a Long Islander deep in my palate here I still come up here and uh, find myself uh, ever ever fascinated with Long Island and its scenes and uh, and painting them and producing this program so that uh, so that you can uh, maybe get the same kind of feeling for this uh, remarkable uh, area in which we live and uh, attempt to make a living. I hope everybody's making a living out there. Things are not so good in Virginia, but I suppose that's, um, that's the story around the country. I discovered that there is maybe a sort of, a, of an orange uh, sheen to this area here, and some of these um, little places down at the bottom of the beard have got a, a more color than, than you would imagine. And so, um, let me say that uh, the putting on of this background is going to be uh, done uh, uh, by observing what I see over there, it becomes darker on the side than it is over here. So this uh, this over here would be put in as the pale, brilliant sort of iridescent pink that it is. But as I come around the bend, um, I'm going to make it. It becomes darker. Uh, by adding, well, let's say some alizarin crimson, that absolutely remarkable color, which is called uh, geranium lake. I don't know where they ever got that word. Uh, and uh, Grumbacher puts all these colors out. I have a sheet prepared here at uh, Cable Vision for people who are wondering how to begin, what supplies to begin when they're starting to uh, be painted to paint. And if anybody wants them, all they have to do is to uh, call or write for that um, uh, sheet of instructions of uh, what supplies to buy, what colors to buy if you're a beginning painter. Uh, there are some highlights on the top of this mask, which I have only just now observed because I've been so involved with the rest of it that I'm going to put the highlights on up here. Pure white, I think, right out of the tube will probably be the thing will, which will make this shine the most. And that can only happen after you've put the background in to see what the value of the background is and what is going to stand out. White has to be saved as the brightest part of any painting. So, and the top of this strangely carved shape here 
is uh, is catching the light at the top, and it's also catching some light down here in this carving. Uh, the carving takes place well there. I think that um, uh, the selection of these materials, uh, which I do because I'm, you know, I've been at this for an awfully long time, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm in the realm of the professional painter. But uh, what I do is uh, is is. Um, possible for anybody. Anybody can go and find a wonderful prop like this, uh, either rent it or borrow it or sketch it in the store. I have many times seen things that I wished I owned so that I could do paintings of it and the store owners have been more than delighted to have me stand there and sketch these things, you know, valuable cups or vases or something that I couldn't afford to buy but that I wanted to include in a painting. You'll be amazed how cooperative most people are if they they know that uh, there is a serious painter that would needs needs some assistance, and um, so this is just little things that I have learned over the years. That uh, when I set myself up on the sidewalk to paint something out of doors, I not only get people who are curious and interested in what I'm doing, but they're also helpful. Uh, some man even offered to go and buy me a cup of coffee because he thought I was getting too cold outside one day, and and you know those things happen because the world is full of very kind and very very interesting people just about everywhere you turn. At least that's the way I think it is. And uh, that doesn't mean to sound Pollyanna. I just have very nice experiences with, with the majority of people, especially when I'm out doing my thing, which is painting. As you can see, I'm giving a three-dimensional look to this carving by giving it this uh, double, uh, this thickness here, and by introducing all of the, um, all of the uh, darkness which comes from observing where the shadows go. Well, I think the time is almost nigh. We've almost come to the end of this program. Uh, I've been certainly uh, enjoyed. Uh, I'm glad that your indulgence to watch me be a silly person on, th on Halloween. But, you know, if life isn't silly, then what is it? I have another call, so, okay, let's take the other call. Hello there. Tell Hello. me who you are. How you doing, Patricia? My name is Sean. Sean. Good. Second Sean this evening. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, I was sitting here having my after-dinner coffee, and uh, I'm watching your show. I had never seen it before. Really? Yeah, I think you do some really nice work. Well, latecomers to the fold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I expect fully that you will watch from now on for the rest of your life. Oh, without a doubt. Good. Without a doubt. Good, Sean. Do you draw or paint at all yourself? Well, actually, yes, I do. I am a painter. Um, but uh, what, I, what I wanted to tell you was uh, I, my paint is not considered fine art as yours is. See, I paint the walls that your paintings are hung on. Listen, I paint walls too, Sean. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use that? Oh, you brush? bet. Yes, of course. Do you use a small brush? <laughs> no, I use a big fat roller. That's what I use. Well, I was wondering how I would go about getting lessons in, the, in fine art. Well, I don't know. This is the best that I can offer. I have virtually no time to be a working painter and to do this show, so I guess what you pick up in the way of tips from here is about the best that I can offer you. Well, all right. Uh, you know, I mean, you just might get something out of it. Uh, a lot of people call me up and tell me they do. Well, thank you. So I'm sure glad that you called, and as I, I, I admire good house painters just about as much as anybody, because uh, when you're good, boy, it's lovely to have those walls beautiful. Well, there's nothing like the finished product. That's right. I, and you, you know, the magic of paint. You go in a freshly painted place, you feel as though you've been reborn. There you go. Yeah, you go. Thanks for calling me. Thank you. Bye-bye, Sean. Bye. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The, whenever you apply paint, a certain magic happens, whether it's big big walls or small little canvases or great Halloween monsters such as this. Well, as you can see, towards the end of the program, I'm able to take the time to do some details. And uh, that means that I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to wind up and I'm going to tell you that uh, this Halloween party is over. I'm glad that you... Um, came. I'm glad you watched. I hope that all this um, taught you something, and I hope it was entertaining at the same time, maybe even amusing, and that you will always tune in to the Cable Easel for the rest of your natural life. Bye-bye.